So have you ever wondered how many useless features does Roblox Studio have? And well, I'm going to tell you that it's quite a bit. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. And some of these features aren't particularly useless. Mostly they are just broken, outdated or have a better alternative. But the first example that I'm basically just going to show is going to be a selection box. And what exactly is a selection box? Well, if I just have a part, I can add a selection box instance to it. And nothing is really going to change right now, because I need to set the adroni from the data properties to be this part. And now if I do this, you can see that we have a selection box around the part. And that's really all there is to this, except well, I don't personally see a use for this. You can change different stuff like the color, as well as the line transparency, where this option should also be a slider, and just mess around with some of these values. So you can possibly just have a huge selection box around the part. And we can even increase this property to something really crazy like, well, 100, but there isn't really a need for that. But then there is also the surface color that we can change, but we also need to remove some of its transparency. And I'm going to ask you right now, does this seem kind of similar to something? Because there is another instance that does roughly the same, but in a bit of a better way. And also there is a transparency property that I'm not exactly sure how it works and why it does this, but it works on the outline of the selection box. And someone may say that this isn't really useless, because you could for example just have a script where you hover over a part, it's going to add the selection box instance and basically just indicate that the part was selected. And now what if I told you that we have a different instance, that's called a highlight. And again this instance has a fill transparency, a fill color, as well as the outline color and the outline transparency. That work exactly the same as the name suggests. But the highlight, since this is also a shader, also has something called the depth mode. And now the selection box instance didn't really have this, and we can really see the box when it's behind another part. But for the highlight, since this is set to always on top, if I just move my camera behind this part, I'm able to see the highlighted part right here. But now following the selection box, there is also another instance called selection sphere. And again, I'm going to set the other one to this part. And for a better visual effect, I'm going to change this part from a block into a ball. And also change its size to like 4x4x4. Four by four by four. And now we have the selection around a sphere. And right off the bat, you can see that there is some weird behavior that's causing the ball to appear a little bit smaller around the selection. And for some reason, this instance doesn't even have a outline transparency. You have the color surface color, the surface transparency and the normal transparency value. And I personally haven't even seen this being used in any of the new Roblox games. And I would personally consider this feature a bit useless, but there is also another thing that happens with the surface transparency. And is that if this value is anywhere below one, this is going to cause the artifacts on the sphere, like this. And I don't personally think that anyone would want to use a broken feature like this. And now a different thing that I haven't really seen in a while is going to be a dialogue. And what exactly is going to be the dialogue now? Again, the dialogue is an instance. There is the dialogue and the dialogue choice. The dialogue needs to be parented under a part. And then we have different properties again for the initial prompt, goodbye dialogue, in use. There is also the tone, which I'm not sure myself what this exactly does, as well as the purpose, which has help, quest and shop. Now this was mostly used in old Roblox games and nowadays developers just make their own systems. But to basically just use this dialogue, I'm just going to set the initial prompt to something like hello, and then the goodbye dialogue to goodbye. And nothing is really going to happen to the dialogue, and well that's because it doesn't have the options. You can see that it only said hello. And now to add the dialogue options for the player to choose from, we just need to add the dialogue choice to the dialogue instance. And now there is going to be the response dialogue, as well as the goodbye dialogue right here. Where the response could be something like hi, and the goodbye I'm just going to set to like three dots. And now if I try to talk to this part, it's going to open the dialogue right here, Except I forgot to change one more thing. And it's going to be the user dialogue property that's going to display the text option right here in this box. So for example, the user dialogue could be something like, who are you? And now if I do a playtest, and again just talk to the part, I'm going to have a who are you option right here. That if I press, it's going to print out the response. And like I said, I don't really see these being used anymore. And that's because in the current form, they are very limiting. 
like you can set images, viewport frames, the name of the speaker or anything else, and it's just overall better to just script your own stuff. And trust me, there is a lot of different features too that I'm not going to go over in this video because it will just take too long to be honest. So I'm just going to present a few of them from the instances and then provide another few in scripting. And now there is also something that was used in old Roblox games and isn't really used anymore and that thing is called a handle. So you have the handle instance as well as these different adornments that can kind of do the same. So for the handle we again need to set the adroni to this part and now we're going to have a few of these selection options. And for these like selection spheres or whatever they are, for them to be interactive we need to set the handle into the player GUI. For some reason this is how old Roblox used to work, but I'm not going to complain. But again there are some different properties. There is the style for the resize and movement, as well as the transparency that I don't really think it's going to work, since this is kind of an old instance. And then if you wanted to you could remove these options if you didn't want the handles to be appeared on the let's say front and back but you don't actually change them here you need to remove it from the faces property so if i remove the back it's going to set the back to false and now this arrow is going to disappear same with the front and now nothing is really going to happen since i'm not really able to move any of these and that's because i need to add a script and for a quick example of how this basically just works, you basically just need to script your own logic by doing script that parent, and then you're going to have different mouse options, like the mouse enter, leave, button one down and up, and the mouse drag. So I'm just going to connect the function into a mouse drag event. And now this is a face, as well as the distance. So I'm just going to print out the face and the distance of this part that's currently being dragged by the hinge. So I can basically just see it going like this, and this distance, this is the distance from the part to the mouse in the 3D world, so the further I drag it, the higher the distance is basically just going to be. And again, this might have been a bit similar to another instance, and that another instance is a drag detector. That I can simply just put into the part, and with that I'm going to be able to basically just drag it. And if I only wanted to move this on some of the axes, I would simply just change the drag style into the translate line. And then change the response style to be geometrical, as well as just anchor the part. Now if I try to move it, I'm going to be able to move it up and down. And I don't really need to script my own logic. And really quickly for some UGC news, I am currently working on a new UGC accessory. Which as you probably guess is going to be the sword. And this is not the final item, this is a work in progress. Where I only have the base for a texture basically just drawn. So if anyone is interested, I'm going to be posting about this on my community tab. But let's get back to the video. So I basically just shown few instances, but there are also some outdated features with scripting. So I'm just going to name this one old code. And just show a few examples. One of them is going to be the weight. Since you can use the wait function to wait a center amount of seconds, for example I can just do wait 5, and then the rest of the code will continue to run after these 5 seconds. But again this wouldn't fully be considered useless. And I'm going to argue that, well, it actually might. Since a few years ago there was an implementation of the task library that added a new function, which is called task wait. Now this is way better than the normal wait and should be used in basically any case and replace the normal wait function and that's because it's mostly more accurate and combined with this you can even make your own timer with run service that's basically just going to use for example the heartbeat event and make calculations with delta time to make an accurate clock so we already have two replacements for the wait function and now there is going to be the instance that new that's going to be the constructor from the instance class, where you have a class name, like for example a part. But then you have an optional second parameter, and that one is basically just for parenting the new instance too. So why is it exactly there? And I'm not really sure myself since after we create the parent we can just set the parent property a line below. But basically as this note says, this feature is not recommended for performance reasons. As an alternative I can just do local part is equal to the new instance part, and then just set the parent to be, for example, the workspace. And now speaking of workspace, if I just type in a ray method, there is going to be the raycast right here, and nothing is wrong with the raycast method, but it's mostly about all of these different deprecated methods from right here. Like for example, you just have find parts on ray, which just returns the first base part or terrain cell intersecting with the given ray. And now this can be returned from Rayka's results. But one interesting thing with this is that 
we can actually use this method, although it's not really recommended, since this method is deprecated. And if it comes to deprecation, I basically just found a dev forum post about all of the deprecated classes, enums, events, and so on. And it's from 2022, so it's a little bit outdated, but there is basically a link to the deprecated API right here. And I need to do a light mode warning since this page is pretty bright. But if I just go to the deprecated classes and just scroll down, you can see that there is a lot of them. And here you have a lot of different instances like the body angular velocity that was replaced by just angular velocity, body force by vector force, and so on. Same with like custom events and receivers, replaced by bindable events. And there is really a lot of stuff, so I'm going to leave this page in the description and provide an example of an instance being deprecated and replaced by a math function. But this is basically just a fun fact. And lastly, I'm going to say that there is actually a way to have access to deprecated instances that you can, for example, add anymore. And one of them could be a flag. You can see that there is going to be no flag option in the whole explorer window. But if you have an old place like I do, which contains these old deprecated instances, you can basically just copy them and just paste them into a game. And here you can basically just see that we have a classic Roblox flag, which serve like the touch interest and the red flag stand. And this one has a class name of, well, flag stand, which is a deprecated instance. But well, you can't even interact with these anymore. But that's basically going to be everything for today. So again, go check out my UGC items. Thank you guys for watching. Hope everyone had a nice day and see ya.